Hello! In this video we will discuss various methods of visualizing distributions of numerical variables. The data that we will be working with come from the World Bank. We will be looking at energy use, measured in terms of kilograms of oil equivalent per capita, in countries around the world in 2010. The data are organized in a data matrix, where each case is a country. We can see that we're missing data from some of the countries. The variable of interest is energy use, which is a continuous numerical variable. An effective way of exploring the characteristics of the distribution of this variable is to visualize it. Possible techniques are a histogram, a dot plot, a box plot, and an intensity map. There are, of course, other ways of visualizing these data, but we'll focus on these four methods in this video. Let's start with the histogram. In a histogram, data are binned into intervals, and heights of the bars represent the number of cases that fall into each interval. In other words, a histogram provides a view of the data density. Higher bars represent areas where data are relatively more common. We can see that majority of the countries use less than 2,000 kilograms of oil equivalent per capita. And looking at the heights of these bars, we can also guesstimate that the median of the distribution is going to be somewhere between 0 and 2,000. That was a statement about the center of the distribution. Histograms are also especially useful for identifying shapes of distributions. In this case, the distribution appears to be unimodal and right skewed. Let's focus on those two statements for a bit. First off, skewness. Distributions are said to be skewed to the side of the long tail. Here's a right skewed distribution where the longer tail is on the positive end, a left skewed distribution where the longer tail is on the negative end, and a symmetric distribution, where two sides of the distribution look roughly symmetric. As you can see, the best way to assess the shapes of distributions is to step back and imagine a smooth curve outlining the distribution, instead of focusing on the jagged edges of the bars in the histogram. Another important aspect of shape is modality. A distribution might be unimodal, with one prominent peak, bimodal, with two prominent peaks, or uniform with no prominent peaks. With more than two prominent peaks, a distribution is usually said to be multimodal. The distribution that you will work most closely with in an introductory statistics course is unimodal, the normal distribution, that you might also know as the bell curve. A bimodal distribution might indicate that there are two distinct groups in your data. For example, here's a distribution of heights of individuals at a preschool. The first peak might be the kids, and the second, the teachers. A uniform distribution usually means no apparent trend in the data, that high and low values of the variable are equally likely to occur. Here's a distribution of last digits of a random sample of people's social security numbers. As expected, the data show no trend. It's just as likely to have a social security number that ends with a zero as a six or a nine. Assessing modality is also best done by imagining a smooth curve outlining the distribution. Here's a trick. Think of the bars of the histogram as wooden blocks and imagine dropping a limp spaghetti over them. Peaks that are further from each other, like this one over here and this one over here, will likely result in differentiable prominent peaks, while peaks that are close to each other may not. Identifying the number of modes is not an exact science. Usually, all you need is to determine whether the distribution is uniform, unimodal, or something else. We should also note that the chosen bin width of a histogram can alter the hi story the histogram is telling. When the bin width is too large, we might lose interesting details. When the bins are too narrow, it might be difficult to get an overall picture of the distribution. The ideal bin width depends on the data you're working with, so you should try playing with it until you're satisfied with the visualization. Let's go back to the energy use data we were working with. Another technique for visualizing these data is a dot plot. A dot plot is useful especially when individual values are of interest. However, as the sample size increases, the dot plot may get too busy. And in that case, we might prefer a histogram over a dot plot. Another visualization technique that's especially useful for highlighting outliers is a box plot. A box plot also readily displays the median, that's the thick line here, and um, the interquartile range, which is the width of the box. 
The median energy use here is roughly 1,500 kilograms of oil equivalent per capita, and the middle 50% of countries use between roughly 700 and 3,200 kilograms of oil equivalent per capita. Countries with oil use above 6,000 kilograms of oil equivalent per capita are considered to have unusually high energy use. There is one more type of visualization that we will discuss in this video, an intensity map. For certain types of data, like the one we're working with here, it might be useful to view the spatial distribution of the data. This display reveals trends in the data that others did not. For example, we can see that energy use is higher in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere. We can also see that most of the countries for which we're missing data are neighboring countries in Africa. I hope that this video has been useful for learning about various techniques for visualization of distributions of numerical variables. Thank you for watching.